It's been a year since the M4 Mac Mini launched, and when it first came out, I said it was the best value Mac Apple had ever made. 12 months later, that's still true, except for now, it's an even better deal. The value has aged in reverse. This thing is somehow more appealing today than it was at launch. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. My name is Jeff Fagan. I'm a filmmaker and content creator. On this channel, I talk about tech, anything that is related to the life of someone who works in video. Computers, cameras, lenses, cameras that are on sunglasses, anything like that, that's what I cover here. So if you're interested in that, make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell to keep up to date with the latest videos on the channel. So why is the M4 Mac Mini the best value Mac? Well, when it was released, it already delivered incredible performance per dollar. You were getting the same M4 chip found in the Apple laptops, but in a desktop that stayed cool, quiet, and ridiculously efficient. For creators and developers, or anyone wanting a serious Mac on a budget, it was a no-brainer pick. But the value has only gone up since then. Not only because we found out you can replace the internal SSD, but because it often goes on sale, especially at places like Amazon and Micro Center, you can often find the M4 Mac Mini around $450. That means you can now get one of Apple's fastest desktop Macs for the price of a mid-range iPad. So between those sales and the upgradability, the M4 Mac Mini has gone from the best value Mac to arguably the best deal in Apple's entire lineup. So what's actually changed in a year hardware-wise? Well, almost nothing. Then that's a good thing. The M4 Mac Mini is still small, quiet, powerful, and rock solid. What's really changed is how I think about it. When it first came out, I thought that the 256 gig base model was kind of a deal breaker. That tiny drive felt like Apple was crippling an otherwise perfect machine, and I thought upgrading the internal SSD was pretty much essential. But after using the M4 MacBook Air for six months, my perspective completely flipped. I realized that being able to upgrade internal storage is way more important on laptops than it is on desktops. Because here's the thing, your M4 Mac Mini doesn't move. You can plug in a fast external SSD, leave it connected, and forget about it. It's not dangling off your lap or adding clutter to your bag, so the storage problem I once thought was a deal breaker really isn't. And considering that you can find the M4 Mac Mini for under $500 most of the time, even with an external SSD, it's still a far better value than any other Mac. So really quickly, I wanna talk about my setup that I have right here behind me because it's changed a lot over the past year. And this over the past, I wanna say three months is pretty much where I think it's gonna stay for now. I originally had three monitors and as you could probably see behind me, I'm now down to two because three was taking up way too much room on my desk and I do film my videos from here now. So I wanted to be able to fit everything on and maximize my space. So let me show you exactly what everything's purpose is. So first, let's go over to the Mac itself. So I have the M4 Mac Mini right here, and I have an Orico Mini Mate on the bottom. And as you can see, it's underneath this little platform. So this is the most I could fit here. I use the Orico Mini Mate specifically for documents. And then I actually have the Mac Mini hooked up to this Thunderbolt 5 dock from OWC. And this is pretty much the best dock I've used because not only does it have two Thunderbolt 5s in the back of the unit, but it has one here at the front. And that's where my OWC Express 1M2 drive comes in. This is actually the 80 gigabit version, but what I can do is I switch between the 40 gigabit and the 80 gigabit. And depending on what project I'm working on, I literally just plug this in right here and plug this in to the front of the unit and I'm good to go. Now I have my drive hooked up and when I'm done using it, I can just unplug it very easily. I don't have to go to the back of my M4 Mac mini and I actually don't have to go to the back of this Thunderbolt dock and that's been a huge lifesaver for me because I keep switching depending on what shoot I'm doing since I don't have any actual Thunderbolt 5 devices. I switch between this Thunderbolt 5 or faster USB 4 drive and my original 1M2 that's 40 gig. And I have everything, including the monitors, hooked in to this Thunderbolt dock. And you may notice I actually have a hardwired keyboard and a hardwired mouse. And I'm not using a Mac mouse, I'm using a gaming mouse. And the reason being is me being able to have this Thunderbolt 5 dock, I, when I want to game, 
hook my Xbox Ally X that I'll talk about a little bit later and I have some videos on it. I can hook it into the Thunderbolt 5 dock and I can use the same keyboard and mouse for when I video game and it just makes things a lot easier and I don't have to really do much more than just grab the cable from back here and plug it in to the Xbox. And then the other reason I like this too is if I don't wanna use the mouse and keyboard, I can still game using the controller and use my existing monitor. So here is my setup. I just wanted to show it to you so you'd understand what I am doing here in 2025 or the end of 2025. Now let's talk about real world use and performance. I use the M4 Mac Mini as my main productivity machine. For email, web browsing, editing videos, listening to music, watching movies, basically everything I do throughout the day. And honestly, it excels at all of it. I even have gone back down to using two displays and multitasking feels smooth. As long as I don't go overboard with browser tabs, the 16 gigs of RAM handles pretty much everything comfortably. I use Clean My Mac to keep an eye on my memory usage, and it only ever warns me when I'm really pushing it. Usually that happens when I'm editing 4K video, have some effects going, and have other apps and tabs open. Speaking of editing, when it comes to the M4 Mac Mini, it can handle pretty much everything I throw at it. It's great with 4K footage, it even handles raw 4K and 6K video files surprisingly well. Once you start adding heavy color grades or effects, start using some crazy high-end codecs, that's where you do see an issue, but mainly my fix has been just lowering the timeline resolution, and I've still been able to edit pretty smoothly. Another thing you could do is edit with proxies, especially if you're editing with 8K raw footage, stuff that just is really intense on the computer. One thing to also note, Recently, Apple came out with a free update for Pro Video Codecs, and so some of those harder to edit Canon codecs on even some of the older Apple computers now edit a lot more smooth. So if you are editing with some of the higher end Canon codecs and you're using something like an M4 Mac Mini, make sure to check your system updates and update to the latest Pro Video drivers. It will come up right away. Sometimes you just have to check the updates manually, believe me, you are going to see a big performance upgrade. Now let's talk about the M5 chip, because I know a lot of you are out there waiting to maybe get an M5 Mac Mini, and we can see what the performance is like with the release of the M5 MacBook Pro. So how much faster is it? According to Apple in early benchmarks, the M5 delivers about a 15% faster multi-threaded CPU performance over the M4. Memory bandwidth has also jumped up from 120 gigabytes per second to 153 gigabytes per second, so that's about a 30% increase. So yes, the M5 is a little bit faster, but the gap isn't massive for most workflows. If you're buying a Mac Mini for editing, productivity, or general creative work, that small jump doesn't change the fact that the M4 Mac Mini still delivers incredible value. You're not missing out on anything major unless you absolutely need that next-gen GPU power or Thunderbolt 5 bandwidth. Now I wanna talk about my external storage workflow. For my projects, I rely on the OWC Express 1M2. It's been the perfect companion and it's fast and powerful enough to edit 4K, 6K, even 8K footage directly from it. It's quiet, reliable, and it's also been instrumental in keeping my internal drive free of documents. The M4 Mac Mini's design has aged beautifully. It doesn't need to be thin, it doesn't need a keyboard or battery. It's simple, it's a silent block of power. You can pair it with any monitor, any keyboard, and as much storage as you want. That flexibility is rare in Apple's ecosystem. And when you factor in that you could find it for around $450, it's wild. For that price, you can build a professional editing or production setup that rivals systems costing three to four times as much. Now let's talk about gaming here for a second. I am a huge gamer. I've been a huge gamer ever since I can remember. But one of the things I notice a lot of Apple review channels do is talk about gaming and how you can game on these devices. And I'm here to tell you right now, unless you're gaming off of stuff in the App Store or using virtualization products, these Apple computers are not great for gaming, especially if you're doing stuff like Call of Duty, Battlefield 6, even Fortnite because of that whole ordeal with Apple and Epic. The latest games you just can't run on Apple computers, and that's why I've been covering the Xbox Ally X and the original Ally X a lot. This has pretty much replaced my needs for gaming, and it's my only Windows computer. Yeah, that's right. This thing is a full-on Windows computer, and I can play pretty much any game I want. Call of Duty, Battlefield 6, Fortnite, PUBG, Star Trek Online, whatever it is. I can play all that on this little handheld console. And lately, I've actually been bringing this 
instead of my MacBook on trips and using this as my DIT machine, offloading footage, doing all that. And it's been a really great companion using this as my portable machine and my M4 Mac Mini as my home desktop. And together for the price, it's still less than a MacBook Pro. So if you don't need a MacBook Pro and you're an avid gamer, make sure to check out some of my reviews on the Xbox Ally X. I have a full review coming soon and I really love this machine. It's really been a game changer as a gamer because I moved from being a PC gamer when I started you know, using Apple products when I became a filmmaker content creator and I started gaming on consoles and consoles you just can't do everything you can do on a PC. So this has been the perfect gap between PC gaming and console gaming because it has kind of the feeling of a console but it has all the features of a PC and Whenever I need a PC for something, I haven't had one for so many years, especially because I was using Boot Camp on my older Apple computers, but since you can't now, if you're an avid gamer and Apple user, the Xbox Ally X is definitely a great option for that, so make sure to stay tuned on more videos for this. Now, over the past year, I've spoken about replacing the internal storage, and I'll link below to my videos on how to do it and what I use. However, long term, I realized that I'm still using an external SSD all the time with the internal storage, even though I've upgraded it to two terabytes. And so although I'm definitely using way more than 256 gigabytes internal because I can, I definitely didn't need to do two terabytes. I probably could have done one terabyte. On top of that, I probably could have just stayed with the basic 256 gig and ran everything off of an external drive. So if you think you're comfortable with that, I would just run everything off an external drive. Now, if you want to run the M4 Mac Mini just as this little block by itself without having any hard drives or SSDs attached, well then, changing the internal storage is probably your best bet. So after one year of daily use, here's where I've landed. The M4 Mac Mini is still somehow the best value Mac you could buy. And with those sales prices and replaceable storage, it's somehow an even better deal today. When it launched, I thought the 256 gigabyte base model was its biggest flaw. Now I see that the external SSDs like the OWC Express 1M2 and the flexibility to upgrade the internal drives make that a non-issue. And now with the M5 chip, offering roughly a 15% CPU gain, the M4 Mac Mini still holds its ground as the most balanced and cost-efficient Mac Apple's ever made. The only thing left on my wish list is Thunderbolt 5, which would unlock the full potential of next-gen drives. But even without it, one year later, the M4 Mac Mini hasn't just held up, it's gotten better, cheaper, and more flexible. So yeah, one year later, it's not just the best value Mac, it's the best deal Apple's ever made. If you got knowledge and value out of today's video, please make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell to keep up to date with the latest videos on the channel. And until next time, my name's Jeff Fagan. Thank you for joining me, especially on this year of making a lot more computer content. I hope you all have been enjoying, and I will catch you all in the next video.